I'm Mari Silby here at the Energy 2020 Plenary with John Holobinko from Cisco. Thanks for joining us. My pleasure. What do you see as some of the, the biggest concerns for the, the cable industry in particular with regard to energy management issues? Sure. Well, the, the greatest issue we see is that the expansion of bandwidth at the explosive rate has meant that the amount of equipment necessary to deliver that bandwidth is significantly to customers. Uh, we, we simply can't grow energy at the same rate we're growing bandwidth. And so, if anything, we need to cut back on energy consumption at the same time we're doubling bandwidth every two years. Yeah, that's a pretty tall order. Sure is. <laughs> How has it been working with uh, the SCT ISBE Energy 2020 folks and, and what kind of role, how important is the role of that team uh, in helping to address these issues across the industry? I think it's very important because energy conservation can come from a number of me measures. Of course, the first thing you think about is using less power and equipment, but operational changes that make things more efficient, reduce truck rolls, mm -hmm. there are a number of different ways that we can reduce energy across the foot Print. Alternate means of generating energy, of course, as well. Yeah. And for Cisco in particular, are there other things even outside of Energy 2020 that the company is doing to encourage sustainability as a, as a corporate culture issue, as a, as a goal for Cisco? Yeah. Well, as you know, Cisco is a very large employer around the world. And so the first thing is uh, we focus on our own facilities and reducing energy, going to renewables, mm -hmm. uh, conservation. Uh, and so that's a very strong part of the overall corporation. And then uh, some people would say Cisco has a vested interest in keeping things the way they are with their, their equipment, right? But actually the, the reverse. So we've been the leader in virtualization and containerization of software. And we think there are tremendous gains in energy savings to be done with that thrust as well. Yeah, talk a little bit about that. So uh, how do you see virtualization helping to address, uh, and, and other new technologies helping to address some sure. of the energy concerns? Well, one of the approaches we've had in the access network is something we call uh, uh, one click uh, energization or activation of equipment. And that is taking away uh, the need for truck rolls for long configurations of equipment, basically putting the equipment in place and having it instantiated itself automatically. Um, and that part of automation is a really key goal. The other step is uh, with regards to virtualization. And what the virtualization gives you is the ability to scale your hardware much more efficiently than we can do it today. So for example, in the DOCSIS arena, uh, we're used to making these very large platforms that day one consume a tremendous amount of energy uh, when the capacity isn't needed. It takes maybe five right, years to grow into right. that. As we go to virtualization uh, and the modulization of the, of the CPU hardware, we can add uh, that processing power in slices, and right. so we only need to consume it yeah. uh, uh, as, as we need the extra power. So incremental growth. There. Incremental for growth. Um, in our nodes in the field, uh, we can do the same thing. Uh, our new intelligent nodes have the ability to turn off ports that aren't used. Significant power savings there. Uh, in addition, we can uh, eliminate truck rolls by uh, bringing back a lot of information that normally the technician had to go to the field to obtain, mm -hmm. and now bring that information back and do automatic diagnostics of the equipment, saving in that area as well. So those are just a couple of examples. Right. Well, that's excellent. Have a great rest of your uh, 2020 plenary session. Thank you so much.